Richard? Who is, who is, Richard? Who is, who is uh, filming? I am. All right, I'm gonna say an opening word. Can I do that now? Is it all set? Good evening, I'm Father O'Leary, the rector of the Cathedral of the Holy Cross, and I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you, those who are tuning in to this liturgy this evening. We are in this beautiful cathedral, and everyone remarks about how wonderful the restoration and the renovation turned out. And we are grateful for the, for the gifts of so many, for the support of so many. We're also recognizing the fact that Elkis Manfredi, who were the architects, received the Presentation Award this year for this work. But as the Cardinal has said, and I have said before, it is a beautiful place, but it is really, truly not just a, a museum, not just a place of beauty. It's a place of real apostolic work. Just a few things that are going, here on, uh, going on at the cathedral. Uh, we're working with an organization, a Spanish organization within the community, and they have identified 40 children who have no access to uh, internet capabilities. And we're having a, a school here every Monday through Friday, 8 to 4, with teachers, uh, with, t with um, socially acceptable and uh, um, uh, places for children to uh, learn and uh, in an environment that's safe. And so we're grateful for that. We're grateful for the grant that we received that our Cathedral Cares Clinic can still continue serving uh, uh, the homeless, the prayer group that we have for the homeless. But not least of these is the work that has been done by the, by the Malta, Knights of Malta here at the Cathedral. Every Wednesday, winter and summer, this group of about 10 come, the males, and they bring these out into the street on the coldest nights, as I said, and the hottest nights, right to the people who, for many reasons, emotional, physical, will not go to shelters, sleep under, under leaves, in, in blankets, around the common. That food goes in 40 minutes. The group comes every week, prepares it, distributes it, and the specialty of that that goes with it is amazingly the Marla blankets that help people keep warm in the winter. I'm so grateful that work, they look into the face of, these, of the people and give them dignity and they put a human face on them, these people who really are the least in our society.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. as he laid down his life for his sheep, so that through his intercession we too may be strengthened by the same Spirit and not be afraid to lay down our life for others. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. from the letter of St. Paul to Philemon. Beloved, I have experienced much joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the Holy Ones have been refreshed by you, brother. Therefore, although I have the full right in Christ to order you to do what is proper, I rather urge you out of love. Being as I am, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Christ Jesus, I urge you on behalf of my child, Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment, who was once, who was once useless to you, but is now useful to both you and me. I am sending him, that is, my own heart back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself so that he might serve me on your behalf in my imprisonment for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that the good you do might not be forced, but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother. Beloved especially to me, but even more so to you, as a man and in the Lord. So if you regard me as a partner, welcome him as you would me. And if he has done you any injustice or owes you anything, 
charge it to me. I, Paul, write this in my own hand. I will pay. May I not tell you that you owe me your very self. Yes, brother, may I profit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. As for the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus said in reply, The coming of the kingdom of God cannot be observed, and no one will announce, Look, here it is, or there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is among you. Then he said to his disciples, The days will come when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. Then we will those who will say to you, 
look, there he is, or, oh, look, here he is. Do not go off. Do not run in pursuit. For just as lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be his day. But first, he must suffer greatly and be rejected by this generation. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, I'm delighted to be here with you today with Monsignor O'Leary, Father John Cahern, and Craig and Nancy Gibson as we celebrate this Mass virtually with all of our brothers and sisters in the Order of Malta. Preparing for the celebration today and reading the lessons uh, from today's feast of St. Joseph, I have to the first reading really struck me because it reminded me of my first assignment as a young friar, which was for two years to work as a prison chaplain. And I often share with people that it was when I gave my first sermon which resulted in a terrible disaster because I was very nervous, I didn't know what to talk about, and I had this inspiration I would talk about the great escapes in the Bible. So I talked about Daniel in the lion's den, the three lads in the fiery furnace, St. Paul escaping over the walls of Damascus in the basket, and Peter in chains. And I must say I had their rapt attention, but that night six prisoners escaped from the prison, so I thought my first sermon was going to be my last. Well, today's first lesson recalls how St. Paul for two years was a prison chaplain, but like many of our saints, he was a prison chaplain while he was in prison. Much like St. Peter who converted his jailer when he was in prison, or Cardinal von Tuan who, by his kindness and his good example, converted his jailers in, in Vietnam. Paul met a prisoner who he was able to bring into the family of the faith. This was in a place called Caesarea uh, Maritima, which was uh, where there was a prison that had been built by Herod the Great. It's right along the Mediterranean coast. In the early church, it was a very important center of Christianity, and eventually a huge Christian library, 30,000 manuscripts uh, was assembled there, and many of the great fathers of the church, Gregory, Nancy Adson, Basil the Great, St. Jerome, and others went there to study these wonderful manuscripts. But it was there that Paul was in prison for two years. And it was there that he met a runaway slave called Onesimus, who'd escaped from servitude in the household of the man to whom the letter that we heard today is addressed, Philemon. He was a wealthy Christian in Colossus, where the local house church assembled in his home. This letter of St. Paul is a very moving letter. It's actually the shortest of his epistles. In Greek, there's only 335 words in the text. Paul is writing to Philemon, asking him to receive Onesimus, not as a slave, but now as a brother. He says that if Onesimus owes him anything, that 
he should charge it to Paul, and that he should welcome Onesimus as if he were welcoming Paul himself. Many people have asked the question why, in its origins, early Christianity, Peter and Paul, did not oppose the institution of slavery in the Roman world. We can't say for sure, but one reason certainly was that those early Christians had a sense that the end time was near, that Christ was going to return in glory very soon. So it wasn't necessary to involve themselves in dealing with the problems of the day, because they thought the time was very short. Another factor was that many of the Christians were themselves very poor. They were slaves, they were foreigners, and hardly in a position to challenge the Roman system of slaves. But there's also a revolutionary way that they transform slavery by teaching that we are all one. That it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman or slave or free, that we are all brothers and sisters in the Lord. I often muse on the fact that the very first person in the church to oppose slavery was actually St. Patrick, the patron of our archdiocese. And he opposed it and condemned the institution of slavery very strongly. But for Patrick, it certainly wasn't a theoretical approach. It was that he had experienced slavery. He had been kidnapped, sold into slavery, brutalized, and, and worked in forced servitude for years. And so he saw up close evil of this institution and was very quick to condemn it. Last Saturday we had a wonderful convocation on social justice and with the theme of racial justice and I, I shared with people at that time something that happened to me when I was a young lad. And, uh, my grandparents lived a few blocks from our house and uh, I would often walk over there and visit and my grandfather very close to me. I'm his namesake, and uh, we used to talk a lot. And at one of our conversations, he had just returned with, from Florida on vacation with, with Nana, and the two of them drove uh, through the south. And coming through a small town in the south on Sunday, they were looking for uh, a Catholic church to be able to go to Mass. And of course, in those days particularly, it was very difficult to find the Catholic church, but as they were driving down one of the streets in this town, they saw a, a young family, an uh, African-American family, a husband, a wife, and several small children, and they were struck by how beautifully dressed they were, and it was obvious that they were waiting at this bus stop to go to church. And then suddenly, the bus came by, and the bus driver swerved the bus right in front of them into a, a puddle of dirty water, sprayed them all with the dirty water, and then sped off without even picking them up. My grandfather was shocked to see this gratuitous racism uh, on this beautiful family. And he said to me as he recounted this, he said, the church needs to do more. That's something that has stayed with me my whole life. This pandemic has unleashed the societal injustices that we see today in the area of health care, employment, education, even the overwhelming number of the minority groups that are in our prisons. Last month, Pope Francis in Assisi published his, his latest encyclical called Fratelli Tutti, which means we are all brothers and sisters. And the Holy Father is calling on us to build a more just and fraternal world, promoting a universal aspiration towards fraternity and social friendship. 
The Holy Father points out that the pandemic has helped to demonstrate that no one can face life in isolation. And the time has come for us to dream as a single human family in which we are all brothers and sisters. The Holy Father talks of the dark clouds over a closed world and decries the loss of community. He laments the selfishness and indifference towards the common good, greed in a culture of waste, racism, poverty and hunger. The Holy Father responds to the many shadows with the luminous example of the Good Shepherd, the Good Samaritan, I'm sorry, from the Gospel, the stranger on the road who becomes a neighbor, a friend, a brother, overcoming prejudices, personal interests, and historical and cultural barriers. I believe that the Order of Malta has a unique calling to help to transform the world. In this Mass, too, we want to pray for Fra Marco Luzzago, the new Lieutenant Grand Master who was just elected uh, at the beginning of this week. The Order of Malta with over 13,000 knights and dames, 80,000 volunteers, 40,000 employees, 110 embassies around the world. We have a great opportunity to help rebuild the world in, in a way that will reflect our call to be brothers and sisters to each other by our devotion to the poor and being promoters of peace. We're so grateful for all of the wonderful work that the New Order of Malta does, even here in our own diocese, in our own parish. Monsignor O'Leary spoke about this before our celebration tonight. Once again, thinking of Paul's letter to Philemon and his work with the prisoners, I, we recall the wonderful work that Malta does with prison ministry and with the sick. Mercy is the context in which the gospel is announced. In today's gospel, Jesus says, people will say, you know, where is the kingdom? Is it here? Is it there? Well, mercy is the sign that betokens the presence of Christ and the presence of the kingdom of God. Our Malta spiritual, spirituality calls us to be men and women of prayer and with a deep sense of community. Right from the beginning, the church has evangelized by announcing the good news that Christ is the Redeemer, He is the Lord, He has conquered sin and death for us. We announce that in the context of the works of mercy, taking care of the widows and the orphans and the sick and the disenfranchised. But we also announce the good news by the fraternity that we live, the community that we live. We see in the Acts of the Apostle how people were drawn to those first Christians because they saw the love and the unity that they lived every day. And so, as we think about our own country and the challenges of racial justice, we look for ways to find paths of healing, reconciliation, and unity. This is a Eucharistic year where we recall that as we eat one loaf, we become one body in Christ and grow in our identity. We are the family of Christ, and we are called to be neighbors and brothers and sisters. Following the example of Paul in prison, Heeding the call of Patrick to reject slavery and its legacy, racism, and to commit ourselves to that tutsio fidei et obsequium paupo, promoting the faith and serving the poor. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
my dear friends, let us confidently make known our needs to our Heavenly Father, who always hears our prayer with tenderness and love. For the Church, that our Holy Father, Pope Francis and Cardinal Sean, and all leaders of the Church guide us in our quest for holiness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our elected officials, that they may govern with wisdom and justice and recognition the dignity of each and every person's life from conception until natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in all the troubled places of the world, in our United States and all the cities and towns of our archdiocese, for peace in our homes and peace in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Order of Malta, with gratitude for the dedication and commitment for all members to the ill and infirm, the needy, and those seeking the strength of consolation, of spiritual support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died and gone before us in faith, our deceased family members, loved ones, and friends, may they be at peace, and may their prayers be with us as we continue our life's journey. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we offer all of our petitions confidently through the intercession of Mary, the Mother of the Divine Shepherd, Our Lady of Palermo, as together we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Most merciful God, pour out your blessing upon these offerings and confirm us in the faith that St. Joseph had professed by the shedding of his blood through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr Joseph, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your wondrous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on our faith and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness, through Christ our Lord. 
and so with the powers of angels, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with me, your unworthy servant, my assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
let us pray. May this heavenly table, O Lord, bestow on us a spirit of fortitude and peace, so that following St. Josephat's example, we may willingly spend our lives working for the honor and unity of the Church through Christ our Lord. I will take a, now, a moment now to lead us all in the daily prayer of the Order of Malta and then share just a few brief remarks prior to dismissal. Lord Jesus, thou hast seen fit to enlist me for thy service in the Order of St. John of Jerusalem. I humbly entreat thee through the intercession of the Most Holy Virgin of Palermo, of St. John the Baptist, Blessed Gerard, and all the saints to keep me faithful to the traditions of our order. Be it mine to practice and defend the apostolic the Roman faith against sacrilege. Be it mine to practice charity towards my neighbors, especially the poor and the sick. Give me the strength I need to carry out this, my resolve, forgetful of myself, learning ever from thy holy gospel a, sp a spirit of deep and generous Christian devotion, striving ever to promote God's glory, the world's peace, and all that may benefit the order of St. John of Jerusalem. Amen. Nancy and I are so pleased to be able to be with all of you here today in the magnificent Cathedral of the Holy Cross, Again and again, we extend thanks and appreciation, praise and applause to Monsignor Kevin O'Leary for the wonderful work that he has done here. If you could all physically be with us tonight, you would see how gorgeous and beautiful, majestic the cathedral looks tonight. We are so very thankful, Cardinal Sean O'Malley, for inviting us in tonight, for all the help from Father Bob Kickham, for our newest Boston area Malta chaplain, Father Jack Ahern, and again, so pleased to be able to have Monsignor Kevin O'Leary here with us tonight. We are so blessed to have this time to be able to come together. I know all of you join me in extending the heartiest applause and appreciation to Cardinal Eastwood. The work that he has done, especially here in the Archdiocese of Boston, has made such an enormous difference and we are so very grateful. And I think we might want to take a moment to see if all of our collective applause might, might be able to reach him. Congratulations. <laughs> the Cardinal has been very busy with many activities, uh, recently back from the beatification of Father McGivney, busy with Catholic University of America board meetings, Presbyteral Council, new transitional deacons, the White Mass, and the accreditation process for St. John's Seminary. He is staying very busy building and growing the Kingdom of God here in the Archdiocese of Boston. For all of us that are members of the Order of Malta, we have faced unprecedented challenges in these last many months. Challenges at home, challenges with family, challenges at work, parish, even sleeping, eating, and exercising. But for many of this, this has also been a time, as Cardinal O'Malley pointed out, where we might feel the hand of God inviting us into deeper moments of prayer and drawing ourselves closer to the Lord. Hopefully many of you have been able to take advantage of the weekly Sunday night rosary and the other Malta resources, and hopefully those all have been a source of great comfort. We would like to take one quick moment to congratulate those who have completed the year of formation and prepare for official investiture ceremonies, which unfortunately had to be rescheduled this year. We recognize Dick Howley, Dan Braga, Amir Roach, Queenie Chong, and Ron Lede. Congratulations to all of you. You will be encouraged to join us tomorrow afternoon for the annual business meeting of the Order and the Mass being celebrated tomorrow night at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City. Once again, thank you all for joining us, and for those who are able to, we will commence with a Zoom social hour at 6 p.m. 
God bless you and thank you. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thank you.